did you watch Raw Monday, by the way? Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, you know, once again, I'll just say the theme of the show, but actually, okay, so I want to talk about this too. Uh, where did I see this tweet? Did I like it? I think maybe. Yeah. So, um, the, I got the quarter hours up there, Di. If you I want don't care about the quarter hours because they, they did one. They did one point seven four eight, which is not bad considering the women's basketball game to twelve point three million, which was higher than like like most of the car. Bro, it was, it was the, like the ratings were to the roof. Like it outdrew like college football games, like it, you know, like tons of stuff, right? It had twelve million viewers. Twelve million viewers, and like wow. and people are wondering, like, you know, wow, that's like you know, dude, this is this is why in the Olympics. Women's gymnastics, uh, well, women's you know, the women's sports do well ratings wise in the Olympics because, bro, it's like the only time of the year that women collectively get together and watch sports, and that's what happened here. Is like you know, it got a lot of popularity from from sports fans, but women, you know, were here like the the, the promotion of this woman, I mean, a lot of women probably you know the, the, will watch this too. So when you get women watching sports in mass numbers, the the numbers go through the roof, you know, so. Well, the um, only thing I, I point out is that uh, the first rock, well, when the show started, it was at one point eight, but the second uh, quarter hour, it jumped up to two point one eight million for Rock Reigns and uh, Rollins there. Well, it was a, it was a thirty something minute segment, so yeah, you know, yeah. But um, highest of the show, up. too. I, 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 you know, I always wondered if they could have waited till the game was over to put that thing on that segment on, but they just said screw it, just go, you know. It didn't med- to them actually probably didn't matter because like you're only getting like seventy five five percent of the, the the fans are watching it. Uh, on the East Coast, and you got to wait to the West Coast, and then that's not going against the game. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter. Plus, all the content just goes on social media, and then people catch up and watch it later. So, so the um, the Rock comes out, says, uh, "I made that boy bleed," and basically just talked about making Cody bleed. Uh, talked about the Cody crybabies. Um, Rock told the fans to put their kids in front of the television so the Uncle Rock could drop some gospel on them. He dressed the little boys and girls by saying their moments of life when a man has to do what a man has to do is that their moments of life when people stick their noses where they don't belong. Rock said their moments of life when he has to beat Cody's down over and over again. Rock asked the fans they felt it. He said professional wrestling is cool. Rock said the ratings have skyrocketed because of him. And Rock said the record the fans set the record for the largest game in the history of Raw. Wow. That's that's is that true? Well, they actually said it uh they, yeah, that they day. have fifteen thousand five hundred forty six in Brooklyn. That's, Joe, look that up. Maybe they meant the not, the biggest one in Brooklyn's history. Well, yeah, I would suggest that's, that's what he meant. Yeah, you know, uh, well, or maybe that might it might be true, bro. You know, because they don't do stadiums for for Raw. Fifteen thousand is a lot, but I'm sure they've had bigger. Yes, yeah. they've have they sold out the the Raw at the Garden like eighteen thousand. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe, Brooklyn, but what's funny is under, underneath. There's a graphic that said 15 straight sellout. Yeah. I mean, that says a lot. I mean, how many sellouts <laughs> in a row has AW done this year? They haven't done any. I don't they, think. Bro, yeah. they, they've only. Remember well, I told Greensboro, you that. Remember Greensboro I told you that metric? Down, yeah. Out of like 71 live shows, they only had like, like two that were above 50% capacity in the buildings that they had. I don't they remember have. that. Wow. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Well, it says here. Go ahead. Uh, WrestleTix Patreon account noted that the WWE Raw event at the Barclays Center was a legit sellout, a total setup capacity of 13,345, all of which were distributed. There wasn't an empty seat in the house. Michael Cole claimed there was 15,546 fans in the building, but they broke their previous attendance record dating back to SmackDown, which saw 12,241 attendees, and The Rock took credit for this achievement, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, they filled that more than usual. Wow. Yeah, but the biggest ever... I, I feel like there's got to be a place that's bigger than fifteen thousand. Bro, Rod, Rod had that said had like a thou- over a thousand. They probably, they probably meant for that building, right? I don't or that, know. Or I Brooklyn. Mean, what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. Then, well, but then again, he said it's the largest gate. Okay, which you know, ticket prices are obviously far more expensive today than they were even five years ago. You know what I'm right. saying? So like fifteen thousand right. and. It, this this price could. He's trans- talking about gate. He might be right. Yeah. Right. What did exactly. AEW run in Brooklyn? Didn't they run a baseball stadium, like small baseball uh, ballpark or something? Okay. I'm because that was a big. Show. I'm surprised Tony didn't come out and say, "Yeah, well, we sold eighteen thousand." Throck said, "Uh, um, he said the final boss has come back to Brooklyn. Finally, the final boss come back to Brooklyn, but the but Brooklyn the Rock didn't come alone. Uh, Reigns comes out. Brooklyn, New York, acknowledge me. The Reigns mentions AW biography, point out his family above all hoodie. 
Rain said he came to Brooklyn to acknowledge his family. Some fans yelled yeet. Rain said no yeet. That was great. He told the fans he would leave if they continued. <laughs> Rain said he wanted to thank his cousin Rock for, help, for helping him make it the easiest WrestleMania of his life. Rock said he and the Rock will smash those fools. And Rock said it would be bloodline rules on Sunday and then we'll have the way with Cody. Rain thanked Cody. Rain thanked Rock again and said he went above and beyond by making Cody bleed. Rain said Rock whooped Cody. He said he didn't need the Rock to do it, but he felt good to see him do it. Rain thanked Rock again and said he put his family above all just as he does. And Rain said that's how you lead. Rain said Cody isn't fit for leadership. Rain said Cody's a politician who's lucky to be there. Rain said that when they started making it cool again in 2020, Cody was off somewhere doing a whole lot of nothing. Rain said Cody saw what he was doing and they were generous and allowed him to have fun, but they can't allow Ro- Cody to knock them off the top of the mountain. This is our mountain, Rain declared, and we run this business. Rollins interrupted, uh, came out in the stands. So he's in the, the, like halfway down the aisle in like one of the uh, uh, hard camera uh, aisles. Uh, Rollins said they crossed the line last week and time for talk is over. He said he was ready for a fight, not just on five days. He said he wanted to fight tonight. That's the biggest raw of all time. The fans deserve the biggest made event. And said, Rollins said, Rock thinks the fans are all there because of him and then challenged him to put his money where his mouth is. Rollins challenged Rock to face him in the show's main event. Rollins said he didn't think old DJ's got the... Rollins said maybe Reigns has grown a sit over the last few years. Rollins said he would be just as happy to face Reigns in the main event. Rollins told him to decide which one it would be, and they said they could even pick the stipulation. Rollins asked which one of them had the... The Rock said Rollins would not fight him or Reigns. When the fans booed, he told them to shut their mouths and enjoy the ride he was taking them on, and Rock said Rollins is a crazy... Rock said they always have a plan. And Solo took the mic and said, Yo, Seth, you ain't fighting the travel chief tonight. You're not fighting the final boss tonight either. You're fighting me tonight. The crowd booed that, obviously. Uh, we'll see you tonight, boy. Rock closed. What'd you think of this? This is like a 32 minute segment, by the way. Okay, first of all, what do you think of this? And then what do you think of Seth's uh, promo? I, I I liked it. Okay. I liked, uh, you know, Seth, Seth Challenge and the two of them got, got a huge bop. Right. You know? Um, and this was fine. You know, was, they got the, the, the big players out there. I mean, they're wrestling this weekend. So it was like, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It was like, yeah, it's a good know. way to start off the show. Yeah, now, right. the problem, I, the only problem I had with this is first of all, Rock's presence, not even Roman has, I mean, his presence is, he looks like a star. He shot like a star, he, everything. Um, but th- yeah, this was a super long segment. Like when Seth came out, I was like, Another 10 right. minutes here. It's like, right. <laughs> exactly. I was um, the same thing, you know? Right. And so the only thing was the same thing that happened the last week with Punk, which he kind of went into business for himself where he came out and said, yeah, you know, they want me to be a commentator, but what if I was a referee? And everybody's like, referee, referee. And I would have this, I would have this week come out and said, hey, you guys wanted me to be ref. I win. I asked and I am going to be the ref or even cooler would be if he's on commentary the ref gets bumped or something and he takes off his shirt and another has a referee shirt underneath and goes in. But the same thing that happened with Punk and the same thing that happened with Carlito on SmackDown when Ray was like, yeah, it's going to be me and somebody else against you two. And everybody's like, Carlito, Carlito. When Dragon Lee came out, they were like, uh, same mm-hmm. thing here. You know, Rock didn't want to fight him. Roman didn't want to fight him. And then when they said solo, everybody kind of, yeah, you, they booed. Right. You know? I don't know why they would do that, but so the match and so that went so long. They had an eight man tag with all the bunch of people that are in the uh, the ladder match of the pay per view. It only went five minutes, but Damien Priest pinned Shiapa clean in the middle of the ring. Do you wonder why they did that? Do I wonder? Yeah. Well, Priest, is, a- high, Priest is higher up the chain. He's got the briefcase. Yeah, the briefcase, right? That's what I say. They wanted him from you know him getting the pin and with you know he's still kind of like the, the briefcase guy. So they wanted like maybe keep, keep you know. Yeah, keep like him he's, strong. He's, yeah, he's a sure. Yeah, right. So uh, they're not really doing nothing with Chiampa and the other guy. He could take the L. Um, I don't know. I just have a feeling because usually, if you know how NW, uh, the, obviously you know how WWE works. Usually, if you win, you know, like the go home show, you usually lose in the pay per view. So I wonder if that'll change. Um, yeah, bro, think about it. There were eight guys in this match, five minutes, not even a minute each. Yeah. It doesn't matter. You, They're all going to be like, who gives a like, so who would have won this match? It means nothing. The rest of the, the, the ladder match is the match. You know, as a matter of fact, the fact that it was short is better because the one thing I can't stand is you put guys in the ring for like 15 minutes in some iteration of each other, but, but when they're going to be wrestling that weekend. 
you know, like you have the tag and the you know, I just I'm not a fan of that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of shorter matches. So right. Do you think uh, if they uh, let's say Cody wins the belt Sunday, rah rah, big celebration, fireworks, then Raw comes and something happens where somebody beats Cody down and then Priest cashes in? Do you think that's a good idea or would it be a bad idea because the crowd leaves unhappy or is that like intriguing to you? Where Cody gets the moment and then bam, it's taken away the next night. I wouldn't do that. Well, myself. well, uh, let me tell you what I, <laughs> I honestly, nobody's even thinking about this. And it's, it's, it's one of the plausible things that could happen. Right. And I'm kind of like, I, I would, this is what I would do. Okay. <laughs> I would have Roman win and I would have trees cash in on Roman. And I would immediately start because they're kind of baby faces. I would immediately start with, with the freaking, the, you know, the, the, the judgment day in the bloodline. Asking about so, why not? Remember like how I said you can like it's good to like like pivot off of a story and start something like like go in a completely different direction? That would be like, you know, I, I would throw that if I was in that book and media, I would absolutely throw that out there. Okay. You know? So I would say no to both ideas, yours and Joe's, only for this reason. Because mm-hmm. bro, these people have been waiting and waiting and making so much noise that they blinked and changed the match from Rocky and Roman. I mean, yeah, Rock and Roman to, you know, uh, Cody Rhodes. If mm-hmm. you were to take that the next day, oh, that would see be so much bad will with the fans that you already won them over by putting Cody in there. And now you're going to take it away the next day. That's the only reason. I'm not saying they're bad ideas. Yeah, it's like a fine line to whether... And, and right now, the fans are really happy with what you're doing. You don't want to turn them. Blood. That every time, you know, Roman comes out, they're chanting Cody like they used to do punk like that like why turn your fan base when you have them happy that's what i would say yeah it's like it's like let me let me me tell you this i was and they they've already teased this okay i liked the visual that they had when they did this a few months ago when the bloodline was lined up across from from judgment day and you had solo and rhea ripley like face to face like she wasn't like like this staring each other down right bro that was that was entertaining stuff you yeah, don't see that, like it's intriguing, which is why that, that's all I'm saying. I, I, I would. There's a lot of things, a lot of directions. I said it's things. a good idea. I right. just wouldn't do it for the reason I gave you. Right, because mm-hmm. here's the thing: going with Cody is like the way everybody wants it to go. It's not intriguing at all. It's like okay, we're just gonna to fill the story, make everybody happy. But like, there's so many ways you can go to make it intriguing. Like, wow, I never thought of that. You know what I'm saying? That that's, but that's just me. Yeah. That you know, I'm, I'm I'm an outside the box guy. But like, but you're right. It is right, it is I, bro. I would agree with you 100. percent But we're not. You know. Yeah. Disco like, sees Cody winning as like a I season, think, fin- like a series finale. Like the show's gonna, like it's a, it's an ending chapter. I think is what Disco is how Disco would see that. Well, that's my my whole my question. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's an ending for that chapter, and you start. I, yeah, I, one with you start another one. Yeah. Like I've got. I got way better. Like I would have, like, like my my thing is the Raw after WrestleMania would be if, if Cody lost that match, and what there's a million circumstances you could put around it that would make the Raw after WrestleMania more intriguing than if Cody won. Okay, that, that that's all I'm saying. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, but okay, so 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 that, this didn't make it to Hulu, but this sounds interesting here. So uh, Roman Rock and Heyman were shown watching Solo, and they agree that he's ready. The Reigns and Rock shook hands. The Rock asked Reigns where he was going. And Reigns said he had to write Heyman's... Oh, I did see this. Reigns said he had to write Heyman's speech. And Heyman looked at the camera to clear that Reigns would be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame on Friday night. And then he so, kissed Rock's hand. How great was that? Right. And so then, uh, this did not make it to who. Okay, I'm going to read this and you tell me how this was. So footage aired from the WWE Performance Center with Chad Gable coaching Stanley Zane a film session in the gym and during an entering workout. Zane was exhausted after throwing off multiple opponents. And Gable entered the ring and put him in a move. Zane tapped out and asked what the hell what the hell what the hell that was. Gable asked Zane if he thought Gunther would care if he was exhausted. Gable wanted to run the drill again, but Zane said no one asked if Gable was trying to burn him out a week before his match. Then Zane asked if Gable didn't think he was good enough. Gable said Zane was more was more was more than good enough. And Gable said Zane made a event at WrestleMania last year, but that's when he had the hunger that is now gone. Gable said he's trying to pull that hunger out and question what was holding Zane back. <laughs> and this is like straight out of the Rocky thing for, for, with the clubber leg. I'm afraid, okay, Zane replied. <laughs> he, said he was afraid of letting everyone d- d- down, including his wife and his son. And Gable said he understands that better than anyone. No, this is Rocky. No, it's the Rocky three. This is the one against. Uh, right, that's what I said. You said Apollo Creed, clubber leg. No, I said Rocky three. 
Oh, I think I think said Apollo yeah. Creed. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, but Clubber, he was scared of Clubber Lang. Right. If anybody that ever saw that movie, this is flat out the exact great movie, by the way. Actually, excellent. At the Hulk Hogan. Okay. Right. Made his uh, Thunderlips. Th- 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 Thunderlips, yes. Toma. <laughs> with a great with a great classic heel promo. Toma love slaves out there. Thunderlips is here in the flesh, baby. Hey, Amen. <laughs> The ultimate male versus the ultimate meatball. Versus the ultimate meatball. (laughs) What a great line, right? Right. Not only that, you know, Rocky, Sylvester Stallone, who came out as such a superstar and a stud and all that, standing next to Hulk looked like a little person. Yeah. Hogan looks seven feet tall in that. Yeah. So Zayn. You guys, let's let's court the, the Twitter controversy a little bit. I've seen some people unhappy. About the Heyman Hall of Fame induction being done by Reigns, fans saying it should be Dreamer, it should be Van Dam, it should be Punk. Do you guys have any problem with Roman Reigns inducting Paul? Uh, here's the funny part: I have zero problem because the person that picked Roman was Paulie. You get the pick who inducts you, mm-hmm. right? Well, plus two, who are you going to get, Brock? I see people like, yeah, but no, Roman's going to get Roman's going to get booed there. I'm like, but he's a Heel. Well, he said, but, "Well, this is what the fan, the fans online need to understand." Okay, he's not getting inducted into the ECW Hall of Fame. He's getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame for his WWE career. So, the one or two people that would induct him would either and be Brock Lesnar, the greatest or business happened. since the right, Adam era with him. Right. Well, not the, uh, they, the when they induct they someone now, it does it does encompass their whole career. So he's getting inducted mainly for WWE, but for WCW, ECW, and everything else. Yeah. Yeah, I got. Yeah, zero. but the fans oh, watching the show today you know, know Paul Heyman from from Brock and from Roman. Not right. from the 25 years ago, ECW. You know yeah, he's been back doing this for 10, 10, 11 years. Remember when he was gone? He was gone yeah. for a long time. Right. But this has been huh. his run well, for 10 finish, years. Let's yeah. finish this, Zane. Mm-hmm. So Zane's able to look him in the eyes and he didn't think he could beat Gunther. Gable said he was telling Zane what he needed to hear and said they need to prove everyone wrong again. Zane went back to training and threw Gable off when he put him in a hold again. Okay. <laughs> Powell, Powell's POV so was Rocky, 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 fun stuff. I wonder if anyone will smart enough to see him punker for this. Let him thank the writers for doing a tr- are doing a tremendous job. Uh, what does that mean? I wonder what? if anyone will smart enough to see him punk or is it just let him think the writers are doing a tremendous job. I don't know what that means. Me, me neither. Um, yeah, this was very well done because you got two guys that you know can do main event promos and have good you know characters, and this was very well done. You know, um, very believable, and they even showed in the video like he goes, you know. I don't want to let down my daughter, you know, she was, or my son, I, I, I forgot what he has, but he goes, you know, they were crying when I lost. And then they, and you should know about that. Cause you have a daughter that was crying. And then they showed like when his daughter was crying, when he lost, right. very well done. Very well done. Right. I bro, I have a feeling they're going to give the title to Sam, to Sammy because he lost a lot of steam when he left the bloodline. Gunther doesn't need it. He's super over and Zane does need it. And the, I, and if they don't give him the title now, he's going to lose all that steam they gave him with uh, the bloodline. So backstage. I mean, I, I'm gonna, hang on. I'm going to pause this real quick. We are so, back. Okay. All right. So this is interesting. So backstage, Rhea Ripley is with the Judgment Day. And then Santos, Angel, Humberto, and Electra Lopez arrived and were greeted by Dom. Priest pulled Dom aside and said they agreed to let him face his father at WrestleMania, but this was a little bit too much. And Priest said he was leaving to make a call. And Ripley said he would talk to Priest, but also reminded Dom about communication. Dom introduced the two factions and the Judgment Day members were not pleased and Dom invited Esco to play Dark. So basically he just, he invited this faction to come in and now they're just hanging out in there thinking like, and like Dom's playing with them, makes them feel right at home. Right? So, and he, you could tell. There, there was a part there where Priest pulled them apart and asked them something yeah. like, why are these guys here? That this yeah. not, is that not in there? Yeah. What did, what did he say? Priest, Priest pulled Dom aside and said they agreed to let him face his father at WrestleMania, but this was too much. Right. Like he's saying, bro, hey, I let you deal, but this is like, right. you know, he's like, I, I got, I got. Let me tell you the only thing that I didn't like about this, and I, uh-huh. and I think Ripley was mad too. Like, what are these guys right. doing here? So there's some sort of dissension, right? Uh, that they've been doing for a long time. Will they explode in WrestleMania? I don't know, but uh-huh. I just thought it was very, very hokey that these people showed up and they're playing darts. I don't think, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of hokey. Darts is darts is popular though. Really? Yeah. There was a guy who was this um the, the, so recently they had the Darts World Championship over in England. And if you you don't go online that much, but like everybody their mother was like all over this because there's this like sixteen year old phenom that was like that like went to the finals and everybody's like, you know, all, all right, like they couldn't believe that this kid this young kid 
right. like beating all these dart masters. So that's so it was kind of popular for 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 a little bit there. But yeah. Um, so then, uh, so they have Sami Zayn against Bronson Reed and Chad Gable's uh, watching the match on a monitor backstage. And um, so basically, they're, they're wrestling. It's the big guy versus small guy. Sami keeps fighting out. Uh, Zayn set up for his hell of halluva kick finisher in the corner, but was distracted by Gunther dragging Gable onto the stage and leaving him there, like he beat him up like a lump of like a like a just a bag. <laughs> but was distracted. Uh, uh, Gunther walked toward the back while Zayn left the ring to check on Gable and then Gunther returned and booted Zayn the ring in the video wall and beat him up and left him land. So there was a no contest in that match. And after the match, Gunther clotheslined Zayn and picked him up and chopped him. And then uh, Gunther uh, continued to work over Zayn and stood over him and taunted him. And then Gunther picked up Zayn and blasted him with two chops. And he picked up the belt and held it up and placed it one foot on Zayn. And as he was leaving, Zayn got up and struggled to his feet and showed signs of life. But then Gunther ran over and knocked him down by a belt shot to the head. And then gloated and walked to the back. What do you think? Anything about this? I thought that was very, very, very well done and very well shot. Uh-huh. Because he beat up Gable. He left him completely laying, right? And then there was, then he beat up um, Gable and uh, Zane, right? Uh-huh. And then when they showed the camera, because the camera is almost like level high, kind of, uh-huh. and they showed like one body just laying and then another body right behind him with Gunther over them. I thought that was very well done. And as usual, they're great at doing heat, right? Nobody came out and ran Gunther out. Nobody, you know, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like they let him get heat. <laughs> so this is kind of interesting. An ad aired for Friday's WWE Hall of Fame ceremony. And Liam Maivia has officially been added to the list of entrants. Uh, that's Rock's late grandmother. So he's going to induct <laughs> the Rock's late grandmother. Well, she was a, but she, she was, was a promoter. promoter. Yeah, she oh, was she a promoter was, in Hawaii. Yeah. I actually, bro, believe this or not, I actually worked for her like in 1988. Really? Yeah. And so uh, Mondo Guerrero and Chavo Guerrero were supposed to go down there against these Samoan guys or Hawaiian guys. And Chavo couldn't make it. So they brought me. And that's where I met one of uh, Bret Hart's brother. I want to say Ross Hart. He was a referee. Mm-hmm. And he asked me, hey, do you want to come to Canada to uh, Calgary, which I had no idea what that was or that was there was even a promotion there i just wanted to get seen right and they brought me to calgary but i did wrestle for her yeah hmm. Hmm. all right so uh so the this never makes it to hulu and i see that they actually gave them three minutes and 35 seconds instead of two minutes this week but ivy nile and maxine dupree defeated candace LeRae and indy hartwell uh anything happened here that i would be interested in uh, no, uh, Dupree basically um, was uh, Hartwell was kind of like, you know, arguing with Candice LeRae because she's being a heel three weeks in a row. You you still haven't figured it out. And uh, Dupree, you know, uh, snuck in a roll up. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously the LeRae and the Hartwell were like arguing. That's going to go nowhere. And I don't find it interesting. Not interesting. I'm not into any of these four. It's, it's a lame storyline. Dupree is hot, but should not be in the ring. They protected her because what they did is they just made her sell. She mm-hmm. didn't even do a high spot. They made her sell, and then she did the roll up. So there was no chance of. Her. I got a better idea. Why don't you send her to NXT and train her, and then bring her back? Let me tell you something. This should be a hot though. With with Jade Cargill, uh, with Bianca, um, Tiffany Stratton, and now you get the soul. What's what's her name? Soul Ruka. Yeah, Soul Ruka's in NXT. Okay, no, no, she's in NXT, but she's yeah. obviously very, very soon going to be coming up because yeah. you watch her. She NXT. probably has the best finisher in wrestling to me. Right, right. So I mean, then here's the thing: you're there's going to be a lot of you know, like you got you're going to have more than a handful now of girls on that on that roster whose athleticism is far superior to, to the rest of the girls. Like yeah, like we, Bianca um, Bailey's actually a good athlete. Um, right. Bianca Bailey Oscar. Um, Carrie Sane, Car- Carrie Eosky, Sane, Eosky, um, like the girls that have Charlotte, the, the girls that have really good athleticism, and some of these girls that don't are like you know, like your Maxine Dupree's or so. You know, right. so I wonder, I wonder what the spots of the spots are going to be gone from these girls when you start seeing these 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 girls coming out here and start doing all this acrobatic. Because they, you know, well, they went out and got some Cirque du Soleil people and gymnasts, gymnasts. And and now you see like how much how much better athletes they are than these girls. You know? Right. Like think yeah. about this. Tiffany Stratton and Sol Rook have only been in two years. Right. What are they gonna look like in another two years? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, all I could, but, but let me tell you, I, I haven't seen them wrestle a full match. I've seen the highlights. Right. These girls do perform good highlights, but can they work? No, no, they can you know? work. Okay, yeah, yeah, bro, I've seen all, I watch NXT every week. There's a lot. Probably about five other girls that should be in the main roster. They got a real good. You know what it reminds me of? Because remember, like ten years ago, almost all the girls sucked, right? And it's almost kind of like women's basketball. Like I don't like women's basketball, mm-hmm. but you're starting to see better players, yeah. which is starting to make it a little bit more interesting. And that's what you're seeing in wrestling. You're seeing the evolution from ten years ago, and every year you're seeing better workers more athletic workers, like they got down, bro. The girls in NXT are really fundamentally sound, the majority of them. Um, so Jey Uso approached Seth backstage and said he had his, he'd have his back at WrestleMania. They tried the bloodline tried him. Um, they did a good video here with Drew McIntyre. He was in front of an open casket and a funeral parlor. He turned around and looked at the camera and laughed. The lid was closed and McIntyre went to a podium and McIntyre said, see him punk has no match in Philadelphia. McIntyre said, punk's brittle and flat fragile body failed him just like it did in UFC. McIntyre said they were left with the thin-skinned guy who saw Jared Leto the Joker and built his entire personality off of him. McIntyre referred to Seth Rollins as Seth Cringe Lord Rollins. And McIntyre said Rollins is broken and has one foot in the grave. McIntyre said Rollins is broken and question really thinks he can beat him after he faces Roman Reigns in The Rock. McIntyre said Rollins deserves all the beatings that are coming his way from the bloodline and to have the casket closed on his championship reign. McIntyre said he would take the broken old workhorse out back and put him down once and for all. This was an excellent promo, by the way. What would you think of this? Excellent. Yeah. Well shot, too. All right. Um, in a fuel <laughs> like, like part, right? Yeah, it was like put, put, it was putting, <laughs> like the some symbolism was, it was putting Punk's WrestleMania opportunity to cast Kid to Perry. <laughs> just, what a great troll job. This Bro, is you that. know what's funny? Yeah. Somebody just told me and somebody that would know and I don't know why they've pushed him this long. And I would not think that he'd want to go to AEW. McIntyre ha- has not signed his contract. Hmm. I don't believe that. All right. Well, somebody that would know told me that. So Really? Yeah. Hmm. And you know, uh, in case you got, you're probably, he, you're probably he, could, he could have bad information. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. You guys are probably aware and Disco will call me Captain Obvious as usual. But just a reminder, The Rock and Roman are both on Jimmy Fallon tonight, if you guys wanted to check that out. I didn't know that. Oh, good. So, uh, okay, the, the, they missed an opportunity here, right? So they do, they're doing Ricochet against Ivar, and you know Ricochet beats Ivar in 10 minutes. But, bro, they've been doing a storyline here that Ricochet's been causing the bloodline a lot of problems, or the, the Justice Day a lot of problems, right? And they actually uh, later, let me see if they come up to this, uh, the vignette. Okay, yeah, they're going to come up to that vignette soon, right? But, bro, they should have like had a thing where, Maybe the judgment day talked to Ivar before this match or something, kind of like lead some, like, you, you know, just kind of continue the story. Like, take this guy out and we'll, like, do something for you. You know, I, I don't know. So the the, the Legato de Fantasma guys are playing darts at the judgment day uh, with, with Dom, actually, not with the rest of judgment day. And Damian Priest complained about his faction not taking care of Ricochet yet. Dom said JD McDonough would take care of Ricochet, but he just had the guy for the job. But he had just the guy for the job just in case he did not. Then Andrade entered the room and went face-to-face with Priest for a moment, but Dom introduced Andrade to Escobar. Dom told Andrade to make him a full member of the crew if he took care of Ricochet, and Andrade asked if they needed him. The other Judgment Day members said no. Andrade finished by asking if they needed him to take care of business, and Dom said he wanted him to. Andrade agreed and shook on it, and then Priest asked Dom if the, the like, end of the thousand members were using his dart. <laughs> they're kind of like, they're, they're setting these guys up, the Judgment Day to be baby faces here, you know? Because they, because that fact that those guys could beat them up, you know what I'm saying? That'd, that'd be good heat for uh for Escobar to be honest with you, you know. This seems to me like a Latino civil war. You got Dragon right. Lee on one side, Andrade is going to be on the other side, and they're two great workers, you know. But um, I also wanted to say that uh, in the Ricochet match, finally they're pushing this guy. It only took him five years, and they put him over on commentary, so it looks like he's finally going to get a sustained push. But man, I just want to say this. Ivar uh-huh. reminds me a lot of Gable. They're probably two of the most underrated wrestlers on that uh, in the company. All like right. he always has a good match. All right. Interesting. Do you think Ricochet's, the way his career's gone there, had to do with Vince still being in power? Maybe Vince wasn't a fan? Looks like it. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. What if they, what if, uh, as you remember, Hunter worked with him in NXT. Right. So Hunter saw his talent firsthand and, 
Like I said, I worked with him in Lucha Underground, and I always thought that the next great wrestler would be Ricochet after Rey Mysterio. No, but he went in there, they clipped his wings. They wouldn't let him do shit. Well, he was one of the... Then he was getting buried. He was one of the main guys that you like really wanted for Lucha Underground, right? Like a top draft pick. That was my top draft pick. Yeah, yeah. What if they brought in... Um, They brought in Dutch. Right. And Dutch cut a promo and said that WrestleMania, they were going to have a, a MAGA deportation match. You know, the Mexican wrestlers, the loser gets deported. Would, they, would you pop if Dutch... That would be him? hilarious, but I would love <laughs> to see him get dragged on social media by other snowflakes. <laughs> right. That's not funny. He comes up with a Trump hat on yeah. and Chad says, says, I'm going to make the match WrestleMania. It's going to be a MAGA deportation match. We're going to get rid of all this. No, but you know, it's it's kind of funny because <laughs> when people say like stuff like that's not funny, right? Yeah, that's not funny to you. It's funny to me. You can't tell me what I think is funny or isn't. I remember one time when we went to see Nacho Libre, I was uh, went with Ray. Bro, Ray laughed like it was the funniest movie he ever saw <laughs> in his life. And I was when, just- Nacho Libre? Nacho Libre, right? Right. And Ray was just having a great time. And I was looking at this like, yeah, it's okay. Not that funny, right? But it's funny to him. You know, it wasn't funny to me. So Becky came out and uh, said she and Ripley did all the talking they need to do, and then challenged her to come out and fight her right there. Pierce comes out with all the um, uh, with all the um, security guards and said the fans could boo him all he wants, but he'd be that he'd be the April Fool, but he couldn't risk a WrestleMania match. Then uh, they told Lynch to leave the ring. Then Rhea comes out and Pierce told Rhea to save Wrestle- WrestleMania, but this turned into just a massive pull apart and brawl. This but brother did they. <laughs> the girls in WWE brawl better than the, the, the men in AEW. I, I'm just going to say that because it's, you know, you can see this, you know, the, 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 bra- the, the, the brawls are better produced here. There's a lot of you, attention to detail, you know, whatever happened to that girl, Joe, that was the general manager with Pierce and slept out of, I think Dana Brooke or somebody like that backstage. And then was just beating out of everybody. She was very believable and good. Sonya Deville. Yeah. Um, they did a little name? quick little promo backstage with damage control in the back, and then they go back to the cut to the another place in the back, and Rhea and Becky are still be doing a pull apart. Yeah, very well done. Yeah. Very well done. Very and people well really got into it, and I like them yeah. throwing the security guys around and you know getting at each other it was well done. She's injured with a torn ACL, and she also just got married, so she's probably just off. And then who? Deville. Oh yeah. Remember Sonia Deville when she slept out of somebody backstage and i was yeah. like you've got to check this out this coach she did it a couple right. times and right. she got into a couple bras and oh, she looked great by the way hang on yeah. Yeah. But hang on a minute here i'm gonna send you something joe okay all right okay once you pull i'm gonna send you this to your twitter inbox pull it up and play it right now you got it i got it okay remember conan i told you that they they had this and i saw this match uh it was a hair versus hair match but this is from August of 1985, this is Chigusa Nagayo versus Dump Matsum- Matsumoto. Right. Okay, in a hair versus hair match. Yeah, I know both right? of them. Okay. I remember I told you, like, this was, like, good like, like, this looks more violent. Like, like picture of, like, girls could, like... Well, those like, girls in the same. 90s were on a whole nother level, dude. whole nother level, right? Yeah. Okay, so watch this. This, this is excellent stuff, but like, you turn it up, John. Well, yeah, but the, the it, it comes through sh- through the recording. That's the only reason I have it down. Like, it'll it'll... If we talk if while it's play. yeah, well, I don't think that all walk up to all of us. I thought so. I did that. It's really sick. I think this is there. That's what the only one. You try to stab and he left his hold of me. She bit him. I am made up. Well, we was up in the only thing I stand no one ever knows. Come on, I ought to look up. What? Come on, what? Come on, tell about a Sarah. Eva, come on, I said that. That's the only one. In the hot dog, the little pill. Yeah, I'm going to go home on the head of it. Jeez. But I'll call them all this snake. You don't get me more. I'll have a plan. I'm not going to tell you two more if it's the same. Okay, so let me, tell you, let me tell you two things about Jeff. Girl, they were crying. Yeah. The kids were crying. Bro, the heat it was incredible with those young girls. Yeah. Uh, and so, look at, oh, oh. that's, that's um, <laughs> the monster, Ripper, the one in the red. Yeah. Isn't that her? Yeah, she's stopping the other baby faces from saving her. So... Um, this is what I loved about Japanese wrestling because it was so much more physical than the United States. Mm-hmm. It wasn't gimmicky, you know, and I'm talking about when I was watching it like early 90s at first. 
Both men and women had incredible physical, realistic matches. And let me give a, a couple other things that I want to say. I used to love when like the American wrestlers, like uh, especially like Stan Hansen and Bruiser Brody, guys like that, they would beat the out of all the young boys that were around the ring. Okay. I used to love that because it was like a shoot. And I used to love when they'd go after fans. And if a fan didn't move out of the way fast enough, they'd just drill them. <laughs> There's no way you could do that today. Right. Back then, it looked hilarious. Right. Yeah, is that, that was not somebody, okay, somebody had a chain. Was it Bruiser Brody, maybe? Brody, yeah. Bro, and I saw him whip around. And I saw the other guy with the bull rope just mm-hmm. knock out of people, bro. You know, Abdullah would come out and everybody would scatter, like, yeah. And they'd get up and thank the wrestler. Like, it was an honor, you know, that kind of thing. But that, yeah, just, that looked, that looked unbelievable for 1985. Yeah, right. Anytime, really, but especially. Well, all the brawling back in 1985 looked, looked really good. That's what I, that's the Georgia Championship Wrestling and stuff, right? Right. The Sheik and Abdul, the Butcher. It's like, you know, yeah. It was was good, realistic brawling. People, people would cry because they were emotionally invested because they made, they made it. As real as possible, you know, bro. How about Brody and Hanson in Japan? Yeah, yeah. All right, that's so, why, uh, like, if if you're my age and you're a kid that grew up on WWE at first, then you first see like your first war games or something. You go, oh, this is different. This is, you know what I mean? Like, this is better. This is more hard hitting. Right. Real. So next, uh, they did this six man with the uh, six woman with the damage control again. Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, and Tegan Knox, and damage control goes over nine minutes. There was no. Angle or anything here, just some throwing man shot. I don't know. I don't know why the why this shit on the show. So, uh, I says, uh, now they now saw the matches for WrestleMania. So I'm not going to hear. But wait a minute, there's something big happen here at the end. So oh, that that match, the Zane hit the insane elbow and knocks him hinder. That's it. No, and what happened at the end? That's I'm reading what it says. I I didn't I didn't see this when Jade Cargill came in at the end. Oh, he didn't. Yeah. Oh, you know it's okay. This is all Remember right. That, it's, that we showed you. Okay, so time out. I'm literally reading Powell, right? Right. Okay. You know what Powell says is POV. What? There's a wave of talent cut. This is after this match. Right. There's a wave of talent cuts taking place tonight. So I was tied up during that match. My apologies. I'll go back and watch this match again before I record my auto review later tonight. Okay. So he missed the. Uh, yeah. So which means so, I missed it too. So, so they start happened? beating up. Yeah, they start beating up. Uh, Bianca or Naomi, one of the two, and then the Bianca comes in to kind of help her out with the numbers game. Oh, I saw this. Yeah, and then yeah. Jake Cargo comes in. Remember, she did that first kick that you liked, and I didn't. Um, no, that was that then- was for SmackDown, Code. You know, you got this all wrong, Conan. That was on SmackDown. You sure? Hundred percent. At the end of the show on SmackDown, or she came out at the beginning of the show, and she came out at the end of the show, and the three girls were standing tall because she cleared the ring of all these girls. Okay, I might, I might be misremembering. Yeah. Yeah, put a kazoo yourself, by the way, for that. I, 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 yeah, I know I didn't see Jake. The, the Jake Let me look this up. It's not, you don't have to look it up. She wasn't on the show. She's on SmackDown, Cody. Jade was on SmackDown. She, sure. she signed with SmackDown. Right, and right, had my bad. Of- so I'm yeah. thinking of SmackDown. My bad. All right, so you're a fountain of misinformation. So you got you to be suspended for a week. Right. Well, I'm going to suspend you. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to suspend you from the AEW review. Well, I'm going to appeal it. Can we call it Seth Rollins back? Kathy Kelly caught up with Seth Rollins backstage, and that's why he took on the Masters solo. And then Rollins said he has only one gear, and it's pedal to the metal. Rollins said he only doesn't plan B, and after Rollins walked away from Kelly, he encountered Drew, who smiled at him. Rollins told McIntyre that he's not dead yet. Then McIntyre said, yet, as he walked away. <laughs> so, right. That was yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, Just one so word. So do Seth versus Solo. It's a, um, so this is a uh, um, Bloodline Rules match. So Jimmy Uso showed up in the middle of this is super kick Rollins. And Jay Uso came out and fought Jimmy to the back. Then Jay out of, so they fight to the back and they keep they have the camera at the entranceway there. And then Jimmy gets thrown back out of the entranceway and the rock comes out. Okay. So the walk walk to the ring and looked down at Rollins once he was inside, and Rollins flashed a smile at the rock, and then Cody Rose entered music kick. Uh and, and for first time we've seen some you know, the rock selling. Cody got out, brother. People were eating this a lot. Bro, the place was we went crazy for this. Right. So Cody worked up a rock with punches and joined Rollins in clearing the broadcast table. Rollins slammed Rock's head on the broadcast table, and Cody stood at the table and set up Rock for a move. But Roman Reigns came from underneath the ring and then tripped up Rollins from behind. Then Reigns ran Rollins into the ring post, and the crowd chanted for CM Punk for some reason. This is what Jason Powell writes. The crowd chanted CM Punk for reasons that make sense only to them. Mm. <laughs> in the ring, Reigns hit Rollins with a Superman punch, and Rock will Cody the ring. 
and then he speared him, and then the rock removed his weightlifting belt, and they just whipped of these two with, with the weightlifting belt, which everybody in the mother knows hurts. And uh, basically, they held their belts up at the end of the show, and they were getting the Rocky Sucks chance to end the show. So, good violent beat down again, and they're getting good heat for a lot of these angles going into WrestleMania. What do you think of that? Which is exactly how I book. That's what you yeah. want to do, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. so, uh, I just want to say, I like when Sakoa delivered the Samoan drop off the ropes through the table. Mm-hmm. I like how quite the dichotomy, tremendous word for Latino. I like how at awesome. the beginning of the show, Rock comes out, they're chanting Rocky, and then at the end, they're booing him. Right. <laughs> that was great. Right. Uh, did you uh, did you guys see this? This is from even after they went off the air, Rock. Rock doesn't, you know, like last week when he kept beating Cody after the cameras were off. Uh-huh. This, so this they, is him. Did you see yeah, this? They put, yeah. Where well, they put him up in the ropes and he's back no, in no. the what I mean by being more easy, you're spot all done. You're from the walls. Yeah, I like that. I like that. <laughs> he whipped the rest. I like that. <laughs> now, if it, I'll play the rest because if you listen to the fans talking, this is, this, I love these kind of fans because they're going to talk like this is the real thing, you know? He's getting us in the rope. He ain't the same rope. TNT5, really? The balls. Yeah. That's all. Yeah, hey, hey, what hey, did they hey, say that that was interesting, Joe? That's like, you know, he's the CEO. He's the, like, they're just going along with the whole story. Yeah. <laughs> right. He um, can do what he wants. So they did a one point. They did a good number against the, considering that the, the women's basketball at 12 million. Right. Bro, she's playing against Connecticut next. Imagine what number that, and that's on Friday night. That's yeah, so that, big numbers. Yeah. She really is incredible though. Like, she's just like Curry. She looks like she effortlessly pulls up from, from, Long range just Bro, did you hear what did you, you know, hear what like, Ken, did you hear what she ain't curry, but did you see did you see what Kenya did? Mar- similar game though. Like yeah, you're speaking like she I'm ain't a, curry, she's yeah. Still, but but let me just say this. She's a female curry if you want to say right. that. That's what but saying, yeah. Let let me say this. Did you see that interview and you can look it up, Joe, where Kenyon Martin, of all people, all right, who's retired, said that if he was covering Caitlin Clark, she wouldn't score one point. So yeah, you just, find a lot that, of these you know. guys try to throw the wet blanket on the women's sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, but, you know, I mean, well, yeah, let, just say, let me just say a summary real quick. You know, the most important match is obviously that tag team match, and they put all the onyx on that. They ended the show with great heat and the way they should. Um, I think the Sammy Gunther match is really going to be good, and I expect the title exchange. Becky Lynn and Rhea Ripley got a lot of heat with their pull aparts. Gunter got heat leaving Sammy Zayn Lane. That's how you book. Not the guy gets heat and then the baby faces run him off. Where's the heat? The payoff is at the actual match, not the match before. Would you agree with that, Disco or no? Yeah. All right. I mean, they said that's the, yeah. The, the, bro, the, the build is the, is the, the content. Right. Because now, you know, you, they, they, they're, they're collecting all the money. You know, the, all the money's been collected for WrestleMania now. Like, come come the show on Saturday. So now we'll see what, what, what the payoff is. But but the but the build has been what's made the money. You know? And I saw, well, we saw on Monday, I don't think you mentioned it, but did you mention when uh, Uso ran into Lil Wayne backstage? Wait, what now? When Uso ran into Lil Wayne, Lil Wayne backstage. Oh, I that. yeah. All right. So he's going to be in, uh, in, uh, in Philly. He's uh-huh. going to sing some new song he has out. I'm wondering if he took the place of Meek Mill or they're both going to go. And they're also saying that Jason Kelsey, who obviously played for the Eagles, is going to be there. Interesting. You know what's – there's an account on Twitter that started DMing me, right? And uh, I'll just re- – you'll get it when I read it. He says, hey, Joe, big fan of the show. I currently work in wrestling and I would like to remain anonymous, but I have no problem feeding you information. I leaked everything that is currently online regarding Mania. And this is – Wednesday, March 20th, he goes, Lil Wayne is scheduled to appear at Mania. So maybe he's a real source. That wasn't released, right? Nobody knew that. Well, I don't think that's a a big deal. That could have easily been announced somewhere. We just right. Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive, unedited, uncensored content and being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams uh thank you for your support thank you for riding with us i know you got a lot of other uh podcast choices be it wrestling or other ones and thank you for picking us boom